So I've been wearing my Bauer Hyperlite 2 gear for almost two months now, and I think I've gotten a pretty good feel on what it's all about. Now this review is going to be a little bit longer than I usually do, but it's going to cover the pads, glove locker, chest, and as well as the stick. I'm also going to touch a little bit on the Vapor 90 580 glove in this video, but I'm going to do a separate video diving really deep into that very soon. But for now, let's begin. At the end of the day, I'm doing what feels right for me, and chasing down my dream. Camera woman. The cameraman never dies in the movies, by the way. But the cameraman never dies. I saw a video the other day of a grizzly bear coming out of a tent. And the guy's filming from inside the tent. But because he was filming, he didn't die. That's kind of a funny joke. Is it on? Is it important? Uh, I think so. And this is a not, not 90, uh, 60 degree catch. So it's like a 590 style catch, not a 580. Catch. <laughs> I'm focusing. <laughs> The Vapor 90 glove that I got feels really good. Like just the, the materials, even though it's made in Thailand, which is weird for like an Asian made glove, but it just felt really good right out of the box. They're better than the Lefebvre stuff. And this, it's a 590. It's not the kind of glove that I would like typically, but uh, this does feel very, feels nice. It really does. I think the Hyperlite 2 might be the best glove that uh, Bauer's ever made. Now the blocker. And this is all stock stuff, just off the shelf, full right. All white, thin, sexy, clean. Very thin. Yeah, feels light. I mean, it's hyper light. If it was hyper heavy, it'd be <laughs> kind of redundant. <laughs> Overall, like, that's a, it's a nice blocker. This is what I care about the most. Um, I pretty much have my mind made up that I want to use a Vapor 90 glove for the season. Uh, but the pads, so these are hyper light two pads, extra large sizing. So that's a, the next sizing up from what I used last year with the mocks. The mocks were largest. They fit pretty good. Just a little bit uh, skinny kind of on the, on the knee block area. Oh my God, look at that. You seen that? How soft that boot is? That is, that's pretty nice. You seen the camera, camera lady, get in there. <laughs> um, riding in my feet. Wait until you see it. When you have the whole pad stiff, great for rebounds, great for feel. But when you come into like a reverse uh, integration, the soft boot allows you to really hinge off the post, I find. And that was one thing that I liked a lot better about my uh, uh, Sheath 20.2s compared to the Sheath G6s. The G6s had a really, really stiff boot. But like this is, this is nice. And it's a totally flat boot, so the pad should sit a little higher. They've hollowed out or flattened out the whole boot area. Like, like look at how thin that is. That's crazy. I will be getting rid of these Monster Hall straps. I'll probably put them up in my sideline swap locker because they're not very good. And I'm going to put on Traspec Pro laces, but that's basically my Hyperlite 2 equipment. I don't have any more sheet logos. I gotta cover the Bauer logos up. Damn it. I wanna start off by saying the pads are probably the one piece of equipment that really got me thinking about ordering a custom set. And the reason being is, well, right away it's Hyperlite. Like it barely feels like I'm wearing anything on the ice. And this goes for the pads, glove and blocker together. But these Hyperlite 2 pads are extra large sizing. And as I mentioned earlier, the mocks I had last year were in large. And although I do like my pads to sit a little bit shorter so I can move better, I found that large was just a little bit too short for me. It wasn't really that happy medium that I found in previous shorter pads. So when I went up, I think the extra large sizing here fits me perfectly, and this is Bauer's version of a 36 plus 1. Now keep in mind, I am 6 foot 5, 230 pounds at the moment of recording this video, and that's what works best for me, because like I said, I like my pads to fit a little bit smaller, less weight, less interference in the thigh rise so I can move better. Now, the rebounds are hot. I feel like it's pretty much the exact same rebounds that you get in the mock as you get in the Hyperlite. I could be wrong, but they feel the exact same in my opinion. Uh, the mock boot is incredibly stiff, with the Hyperlite being incredibly soft. That was one big difference. As well as the Stabiliflex knee block, which is a one-piece knee block that's integrated into the core of the pads, but it actually has a little bit of wiggle room compared to the Stabilis slide in the mock, which does not move at all. And I found this to be a really awesome improvement. I found with the mock last year, my pad didn't rotate backwards or forwards just a little bit the way that I needed to, and it was just stiff, straight, and it didn't really work with me personally. But Stabiliflex on Hyperlite 2 works perfect. It's the exact happy medium that I was looking for. Now, I will say that the rotations on my G6 set, I think were better than Hyperlite 2, but again, this all comes down to preference. Bauer also flattened out the boot of the pad this year, which really helps for making that pad sit a little bit taller than it traditionally would, and they've shaved out a lot of the extra leg channel space in the cat wrap material from last year, which I felt on mock dragged on the ice and caused me to slip out a few times for my push-ins and recoveries. But overall, the vapor strapping is great. I felt in control of the pad at all times with it on. It feels great. You no know, over or under rotation, just that perfect little bit of wiggle between the two. And overall, I was really, really happy with the pads. Not really too much negative to say overall. 
Now let's talk about the blocker, and like everything here, I'm not going to bore you with fancy salesman talk or you know Bowers' technologies that they added for this season. This is just my first-hand experience. The blocker to start is arguably the lightest blocker in the market if it isn't already, and it definitely feels like it. I think that the blocker pop that Bowers crafted in their Supreme and Vapor line of blockers has been the best in the market for years, but I do think that Warrior has caught them with their G6 line, and if they haven't caught them, they're in extremely close second place in regards to the pop of rebounds and how hot the pucks come off. Now the wrist mobility out of the box was awful. Like this blocker comes with a cuff that is stitched in with these two elastics here and it does not feel good. So the first thing I did, I didn't want to be patient or stretch it out over time or kind of break it in. I just cut off the straps. And although I probably shouldn't have done it, cutting it out did completely what I was looking for and it made my wrist feel more mobile. It wasn't restricting. And I still think that the blocker does need a little bit more wrist mobility as of right now, but it was night and day different from when it comes stock. But I ended up cutting open the cuff completely. It was so restricting. and. It definitely felt better. Rebounds are hot. As far as the rest goes, it's your typical Bauer blocker. It's light, it's thin, it feels great, great finger protection, but to a fault, I will say, the finger protection is a little bit restricting in the way that I grip my stick. I feel I have more freedom to grip my stick and transition to playing the puck with a G6 blocker or a 20.2 blocker than I do with the Bauer one. So maybe there's a way for Bauer to lighten up the protection around the fingers just to kind of get that stick in and out and get a little bit more comfortability when playing it. Now, as far as the glove goes, this was the biggest surprise of all because I am a 90 degree catch or a 580 advocate. And this glove is a 60 degree catch, 590 if you're in a Lefebvre style glove. Now the Hyperlite 2 catch grip materials are incredible and it's probably the best that I've felt inside the glove ever. And although this glove is made in Thailand, like I mentioned earlier, it feels handcrafted and designed with precision. And I seriously have to hand it to Bauer. Putting the double T versus single T skate laces versus wax lace 580 versus 590 aside, this glove feels Canadian made. It felt like it was made for me personally. And without a doubt, this is the greatest glove that I think Bauer has ever crafted because the mock glove I had last year was essentially a second blocker. It felt cheap, it felt Asian made, and it didn't feel great. Now, as far as performance goes, the palm is game ready. So obviously it's been feeling a few stingers since day one, but that double T pocket feels crisp and rich. and is easily the best glove I've ever used off the shelf, period. Now I did order a custom 580 or Vapor 90 as Bauer's calling it because they don't want to call it a 580. Um, this came with a pro palm with added foam in the fingers, scale lace pocket, reinforced T-bar. And this is probably the best feel I've ever found in a glove, but just the materials on this glove alone with the comfort, it's the exact feel that I'm desiring and that I'm looking for in a 580 and has made it the best glove that I've ever used. Again, period. And to put in perspective how popular and how great this glove is, Bauer's gonna be making the 580, the Vapor 90 break, the stock break on the Hyperlite 3, and the Mach 2 starting next year for all the lines moving forward. It has been that popular. And I'll do a separate video breaking down the Vapor 90 like I mentioned earlier, but I think you get the point. This is the best glove Bauer has ever made, whether we're talking 590 or 580. The materials, the lightness, the protection. The protection could use a little bit of work, but keep in mind this is a game ready glove. Hats off the Bauer. Best glove, period. I just hate on the 580 how this is so short and to actually have the glove feel comfortable, you have to detach it, but it looks bad when the gloves come and open as opposed to this one. It's got a nice Velcro strap. It stays on and it stretches. I would love my Vapor 90 with this padding from the stock Hyperlite 2. Now, as far as the Hyperlite 2 stick goes compared to the Hyperlite 1, although Bauer does pitch a couple new technologies and new features, I really couldn't notice a difference. The only real difference I noticed was that the shaft maybe was a little bit more reinforced. Take a look. So this is probably skate like 10, maybe 15 with the Hyperlite 2 twig and an absolute missile today. She's donezo. I don't know, about 30 bucks a skate by the time you factor in the cost and everything. So the Hyperlite, the Vapor Line is the best stick on the market, I think. It's just unfortunate they break like crazy because then the value kind of goes down, obviously, compared to the mock where the feel isn't as great. I have not broken a mock stick yet. So tight on cash, go mock. If you want performance, go Hyperlite. But uh, that's my stick breakdown for 2023 for the Bauer stick. The Hyperlite 2 did last, but not long enough. I think this might have been about six weeks before she broke. So, oh well. I think after last year complaining about how easy all these Bauer Hyperlite sticks were breaking on me, I mean, I was even breaking Bauer Hyperlite sticks and Bauer wasn't warranting them anymore because I was going through so many. So this is a Bauer Hyperlite stick. This is the third Bauer Hyperlite stick that I bought in the last year and every single one of them broke at the shaft and it lasted, I would say three weeks, maybe less. Sometimes two, in this case, even three ice times before it snaps. I want Bauer to take some more responsibility to make some better sticks. Yeah, the stick's 350 bucks, but I know for a fact I'm not the only person that's bought $350 sticks like this. They last three skates and Bauer says, oh, sorry, you've ordered the warranty. And especially when you pay for the stick, including the warranty price, I paid for the warranty, even when they were under warranty. So I think Bauer understands that they needed to fix 
the shafts, especially these sticks, because they break so easily. It seems to be a little bit of an improvement, but not much. As far as the rest of the stick goes, the Hyperlite line is the best feel on the market for deflecting pucks, the best feel for getting the most out of my blocker and my elbow. Um, I don't think it's the best puck handling stick. I think the Mach definitely is the best puck handling stick, but there is a difference in the lies between the Hyperlite and the Mach. So I hope that on the customizer soon, Bauer will give you the option to change the lies, which is basically how the stick sits on the ice in the hand of your blocker. But all in all, it's a great stick. It's the best stick on the market. Performance wise, durability, probably not so much. And I really love the Hyperlite 2 stick. So this is a 27 inch stick, and this is shaved a lot down. This is like a very aggressive honeycomb shape. I get comments, questions, messages all the time. Will it break at the paddle? It doesn't change anything. Like these materials in here are so sturdy, nothing is gonna break. They all break right here at the shaft. I've shaved this paddle almost wholly straight down, and it doesn't break. I've never had a single issue here with the shaving of the paddle. It's always at the shaft. So the Hyperlite 2 is lasted a little longer. Shafts are the Achilles heel of uh, six today. Now the chest protector. So I have the Hyperlite 2 chest protector and this is custom, but why Vapor? Well, since the launch of the 1X chest, the Vapor series chest has always had the most mobility. And although in recent years, Bauer has started to add mobility to their bulkier Supreme line of chests, the Vapor is a unit that I fell in love with from the earliest days that I had it. The comfort, the protection, the lack of stingers, and the overall feel is why I kept going with them. I got a custom Hyperlite chest protector, and I got the arms and the biceps reinforced. I love that chest so much, but I did find the sternum pad was a little bit of a trampoline for pucks, and they added some foam into it that was supposed to cradle pucks, but it really kind of did the opposite. I don't know if they necessarily fixed that with the Hyperlite 2, but with the version that I have, everything is reinforced, the feel is great, the comfort is great. I just, I don't really have any complaints about the Hyperlite 2 chest. It really is the best in the market. Although I did find this little tip to help with keeping it from sinking. So these are the exact same chest protector. Now one looks a little bit bigger than the other, and the reason being is they're both XL body, XL arms. They're both reinforced bicep and forearm. The uh, shoulders and floaters in the Hyperlite 2 are a little bit more reinforced. But with this one, I spent the last two years hanging it on my jersey stall in the locker room, just hanging up like that after skates. I was talking to Matt Murray the other day, and I'll throw a picture up on the screen. He looks huge, even though he's using NHL spec equipment. And I asked him, I was like, how do you get it to look that big? Because we're the exact same size, but you look way bigger than me. Why is that? And he said, never, ever hang it up on the jersey hook because you end up stretching it out and it ends up getting soft and limp. Always sit it down, never hang it, and just keep it nice and crispy. So if anybody's looking for some tips, I learned that maybe a couple weeks ago. Now this is a custom chest protector, so what's so special about it? Well, first off, it's all white, which is a custom only option. And I thought about going with a digibrint chest just so I can get the entire thing to be navy blue with some white floaters, but I didn't think it was worth the extra $100 upcharge, so I just went with all white. Spec-wise, this is an extra large arm, extra large body, Hyperlite 2 arms and body as well, and it's the same thing that you buy in the store. And the biggest and main difference that I got was that everything is reinforced. So outside of the reinforcing, this is a stock chest protector with custom colors, but I wanted to reinforce it so everything didn't deflate. The biceps and the forearms, they're like rocks. They're hard and I feel nothing in them. Basically, everything I put on here is to make this an absolute mobile tank. And that's what I want to be in net. Performance wise, it's exactly what I expected. There are no stingers. The shoulder and the neck mobility are second to none. Keep in mind that I take out the second layer of Velcro padding in the abdominal area because I just find it kind of useless and it really gets in the way of my mobility. The seal to the post is great in the reverse. And I really don't feel like there's any holes in the chest protector. I just feel really bulky and I like it. Now, price wise, this custom chest is not cheap at almost 900 Canadian with the custom upcharge for this custom unit. So again, not cheap, but during the season, I need the best protection in practice and I want the best performance that I can only get in games. And the chest does everything I want it to. It presents big, incredible mobility, the best of any chest protector in the market that I've ever seen. Absolute beautiful unit, beautiful all white design color scheme. The protection is top notch and dare I say that the value, although very expensive at 900 bucks, the value is outstanding. With that being said, let's talk about price. Obviously, as I've documented in years past, Bauer has employee pricing for Bauer employees to complete their Bauer Online University programming. And again, like I do every single year, I'm very fortunate that some of the employees do send me these codes. So I get 60% off. So a full set for me is under $2,000, which is a wicked deal compared to the $4,000 retail price. And I'd like to remind everybody again that I do not, I repeat, I do not control the codes or the university pricing. So if you want that, message Bauer, don't message me. I'm just very fortunate where their employees are nice enough to hand me off their coupons and I get these really nice deals. So the retail price on Hyperlite 2 is over $4,000 with taxes. And I mean, $2,250 for a set of pads is the most expensive pad Bauer has ever retailed. And to be honest, I probably would not have bought this stock set off the shelf for full price. Now, is it worth the money? Well, let's take a quick word from today's video sponsor, Manscaped.com. The new Manscaped Beard Hedger is a premium beard sculpting machine with enough power and precision to craft your style in a single swipe. The kit comes with a styling cream, beard conditioner and shampoo, a little scrubby here for getting all the junk out of your beard, and the main attraction, the Hedger itself 
It's got 20 different lengths that are controlled by this little zoom wheel that you click back and forth, as you see here. It also carries a 60 minute battery life on a single charge, all encased in its waterproof design. And you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code TRAVSUCKS at manscaped.com. That is 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com when you use the code TRAVSUCKS at checkout. It is time to feel sexy and free this 2023. And thanks to manscaped.com for sponsoring this video. Now, my verdict on the Hyperlite 2 equipment. Now, this kind of depends. Now, I did not end up ordering a custom set of Hyperlite 2 gear for this upcoming pro hockey season. And the reason being is that I felt great in the pads and the blocker, but all the other pros that I talked to told me that if you want the feel that you love in Bauer, you're gonna need about two to three sets here at the pro level. One set is just not gonna last. The gear is not made to last all season at the pro level. And yes, I have a practice 580 glove and my game Vapor 90 as well all coming with the practice palm brakes specifically, but I couldn't bring myself to order a custom set, especially since the FPHL is a warrior sponsored league and we get 60% off any year. So it's not just stock with the Bauer employee pricing, it's 60% off custom anything you want. And when you can get a custom G6 set for under $2,000 Canadian compared to four grand on a custom Hyperlight 2 set that won't last you all season, it was a no brainer for me. If you're playing once a week in a men's league or a lower level AAA, I can see the gear lasting you an entire season, but I just can't see that for myself. And to spend thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 a year this upcoming season just to have the feel that I want in Bauer is not worth it, especially when I think the G6 stuff is just as good with a couple custom modifications. And that's why I didn't order a custom Hyperlite 2 setup for the season. So this is my full review on the Hyperlite 2 gear. I'm curious if you own a set, are you looking to own a set? Do you have any questions? Leave them all in the comment section below. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can have the best answer possible. If you like this video review, I have more coming up very soon. So hit the subscribe button so you don't miss those. I wanna say thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.